Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 34. Now we left off, Jacob is living in Shechem. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, that's important, well, it raises a question, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. She went to go hang out with the world of the girls. She didn't stay within the camp of, of Jacob and the children of Israel. you got to watch your children. you got to watch who they hang out with what the Bible says, black and white. And when Shechem the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince of the county, country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her, raped her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. Well, at least this guy treated uh, Dinah better than one of David's sons. But still, and Shechem spake unto his father Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. There we got her. But you got to get the approval of the father afterwards. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle, so they're grown up to a bed. They're taking care of the cattle in the field type of world and Jacob held his peace until they were come and Hamor the father of Shechem went out unto Jacob to commune with him to talk with him and the sons of Jacob came out of the field and when they heard it and the men were grieved and they were very wroth because he had wrought folly in Israel knows the children are using Israel so Jacob told him about his new name. And they take Israel already as we are the group of Israel. We are the children of Israel. And say Jacob. In line with Jacob's daughter, Jacob and Israel, which thing ought not to be done. We found this in the law in Deuteronomy 22:28. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem... He's, the city is named for Shechem. Long is for your daughter. I pray you give her him to wife. Allow this marriage. They are not Israelites. They are not the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now the law has not forbidden it yet. But with Isaac, go into your mother's, go into our family. Get Rebecca. Jacob, go into Rebekah's family and get a wife. Through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they've already seen that a pure race of people, they stepped outside to an Egyptian Hagar, and it's all messed up. Esau steps out and marries into Ishmael and to the children of the land, and Rebekah and Isaac are grieved. It's known. The father Jacob by the grandpa Isaac has spoken to these children. They know that their father went into Re Rebecca's family to get their mother, mothers, and make ye marriages with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. Mixed marriage. So come join our daughters, and then come let's let's get married and, and let's have mixed marriages. That's the world saying. That's not the children of God saying. And ye shall dwell with us. Come live with us. 
Don't just go out and see what the daughters are doing now. Come on, let's let's get together as a one big family and let's have one big hoopla. That's against the Bible. Paul says, Why be ye unequally yoked with the unbelievers? A widow, if she's going to marry, the Bible says, Paul speaks in the Corinthian church, she's to marry only in the Lord. He shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Here, we'll give you our land. Now, you call it prejudice or whatever you want to call it, uh, racist or anything like that. That's Bible doctrine. And you can, you can face God yourself about it, but you're going to be wrong. Dwell and trade ye therein. And get your possessions therein. So we want your people. We want your possessions. We want everything that's a part of you. And Shechem said unto her father. And unto her brethren. Let me find grace in your eyes. What ye shall say unto me. I will give. And whatever the money is. Whatever. We'll pay it. Wages of sin is death. Ask me never so much dowry. That's a price given for a bride. And gift. That's Jacob's favorite word. And I will give according as ye have said, as ye shall say unto me. But give me the damsel to wife. Oh, he's really stretching it out. You find Herod's like, he, he, he turns to the, to the young broad and says, Hey, I'll give me, ask for anything but half my kingdom. This guy said, listen, wherever you ask, I'll give it. They could right now say, hey, here's a blank check. and we'll, We want it all. We want the city. We want the people. But they don't. Solomon's giving them a blank check. He says, Lord God, I need help to guide your people. I need your wisdom. I need your understanding to do right. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, deceitfully. Deceitfully, we're going to see the fruits of that in a minute. But get deceitfully, because you're going to get a definition now. And said, because he has defiled Dana or Dinah, their sister. And they said unto him, we cannot do this thing. True. To give our sister to one that is uncircumcised. True. For that we uh, that were a reproach unto us. True. Very much true. And yet, it's a lie. Because they're doing it deceitfully. The word spoken of 14 is not of truth, but of deceitfulness. Satan spoke to Eve and everything but one sentence was true. You can tell a truth and yet be a lie. you got to be careful with deceivers. They can speak the Bible. They can have a King James Bible. They can speak from the pulpit. They can, what you think is true. That's why the Bible, that's why one Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. But in this we will consent unto you, if you will be as we be, that every male of you be circumcised. Nowhere does it say this. God told Abraham, if, if the people are bought with your money, if they are part of your family, if they are of you, then they're to be circumcised. I'm pretty sure that, that the children of Jacob understand what circumcision is to be, because that was a, a token that God had of Abraham. It's a very important token. You don't mess with circumcision. You do it or you don't do it. You do it right or you don't do it right. Then we will give our daughter unto you. Not supposed to. And we will take your daughters to us. Not supposed to. And we will dwell with you. Not supposed to. And we'll become one people. And that's a lie. They are lying to, and we'll get to this by the end of the chapter, but this is a lie right now. It looks good. There are all kinds of promises. And yet it will not happen. That's the deceitfulness. 
Genesis 34 tells us what the definition that is now spoken about, that Jesus will speak, that Moses will speak, that Paul will speak, Peter speaks, Jude preaches, James preaches about deceitfulness, deceivers. They can sound like the Bible and yet be totally wrong. If you do this, God will save you and you go to heaven and it's nowhere found in the Bible. And they're a dime a dozen. If not cheaper. But, if you will not hearken unto us to be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and we will be gone. Now this is the hook, line, and sinker for Shechem. If you want to take the one I love. And this is where religion will latch on to you that, you know, if you do something or you go out of this, you're no more. You cannot. God is not pleased with you. God will hate you. That's deceitfulness. That's the difference between a cult and a Bible believer. You can be saved Christian. You go live out in the world. You're not going to lose your soul. You're going to lose rewards. You're not going to be happy to judge and see the Christ. But you can't say because you leave the Lord you're going to lose your salvation. Yet teach, churches teaches that. Churches will teach you that unless God has chosen you, you can't be saved. Unless you belong to our particular church and be buried in our graveyard, oh, you're not going to get no respect with God. That's deceitfulness. And their words please Hamar and Shechem, Hamar's son. And the young men, it doesn't cost nothing. Just a surgery. They're not going to lose anything. And the young men deferred not to do the thing. Yeah. And the young men deferred not to do the thing because he had delight in Jacob's daughter. And he was more honorable than all the house of his father. Amor Shechem. His son came to the gate of their city. This is where all the business, this is the city hall, this is the judgment. This is where the elders of the city meet. This is where they had their city meetings. And commune with the men of their city, saying, These men are peaceable. Uh, no, they're not going to be. I've read the end of the chapter. With us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land. It's their, it's their land. God said it's their land, and slowly by slowly, they will get that land. But right now, not yet. A little premature of giving the land to the children of Jacob or Israel. That's when Joshua brings them in. Right now, it's not their land. Moses, oh, I'm going to redeem people. I'm going to, I'm going to take care of Israel. I'm going to kill this Egyptian. Not yet, Moses. Not now sin behold it is large enough for them let us take their daughters to us for wives and let us give them our daughters mixed marriage again only here if you got a problem with mixed marriages go over to Ezra and Nehemiah and see what the problem with the mixed marriages are only herein we will the men consent unto us for to dwell with us to be one people unity that's what they're doing at the Tower of Babel. Let's all get together. Let's make religion without God. There's no God in this in this chapter. But we're going to have perfect unity. I can just imagine this next sentence coming up at the gate. If every male among us be circumcised as they are circumcised. Let's do that one over. Shall not their cattle and their substance and every beast of theirs be ours? Oh, see, you want to get together and you want to take what belongs to the children of God. Now it comes out. Hmm. Only let us consent unto them and they will dwell with us. It's a selfish motive. I thought it was for Dinah. I thought it 
Arthur because I love Dinah so much and I, I'll do anything to, to get her hand in marriage. No, no, we want their goods. And that is Shechem and Hamor speaking to the people of, of the city. It's not the people of the city talking. That's these two who are involved with this daughter of Jacob. Oh, we want we want the girl. We're just so much in love with her and people so we can take their stuff. Now it comes out. And unto Hamor and unto Shechem his son hearkened all that went out of the gate of the city. And every male was circumcised. And all they went out of the gate of his city. And it came to pass on the third day. A lot of third days in the Bible. That's an interesting number. Third day. Three days. When they were sore. And I bet that they were. Joshua 5, 2 through 4. Then two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi. Reuben is going to lose that birthright because he's going to sleep with one of Jacob's wives, the handmaids. I forget their name. So, all right, now, it's supposed to be Joseph. But Joseph is broken into two, Ephraim and Manasseh. So here comes now, next is Simeon. Next is Levi, the priest class. Da Dinah's brethren. I want to say Dana all the time. Dinah's brethren. This is Leah's boys and one girl. Took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew the males. Murder. They lost their birthright. In chapter 49, verse 5, we'll see that later. Now, we're before the law. But God explained to Noah, any man that slays any man, his blood shall be accounted for him. They lose the inheritance of being the line of Jesus Christ. Though Levi gets to be the priest. The children of Levi in the millennium will be serving Jesus Christ at the temple as priests. Oh, why is it? Every time I say you want to say something that... that Oh, Zadok. They slew Haman, Hamor, and Shechem with his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain, spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their sheep, their oxen, their asses, and that which was in the city, and that which was at, which was in the field, theft, murder, and theft. Now watch this, verse thirteen. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, deceitfully. Deceitfully ended up with murder, and it ended up with theft. That's what a deceiver will do to somebody. He will kill them, and he'll rob from them. You may have a spiritual death. Or you get nothing in reward of God, or you <coughs> you might just cause death to your soul and end up in hell. And they'll take everything you got. That's a biblical definition of being deceived, being a deceiver. Right there, Genesis 34. And all their wealth, and all their little ones, the children, and their wives... That's interesting. They kill all the males and take the wives and took them captive and spoiled every, even all that was in the house. See? And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me to make me stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites. Now the Perizzites, these are the people in the land of Canaan. And I, being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. He's nervous now. And they, Simeon and Levi, said, Should he deal with our sister as with an harlot? Now there's one question we always ask of ourselves when we study the Bible. The way Jacob is. And I don't know if it's right or wrong, but what if, 
What if Dinah would have been Rachel's daughter? What if Jacob... Because he seems to act like, no big deal. Remember when, when Esau comes, he puts the handmaids up front. Then he puts Leah and her children. And he puts Rachel and Joseph in the back. And Jacob learned this by because Isaac loved Esau because of his venison. And his mother loved Jacob because he was a plain man. And we just ask ourselves, but what if this girl, what if, what if it had been a daughter of Rachel? What would Jacob have done? Because there's just really no regard here. That the sons of Jacob, the brothers of, of Dinah, had to step up and do. It's wrong. But Jacob doesn't do anything. That's interesting. That's a very interesting note there.